Hello everyone, this is Feynman from Beijing, China. It's so glad to be here. It's my second time to attend KubeCon EU, and I was looking forward to attending this meeting in person since we have a couple of friends and partners in Spain. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we can only give this speech at the front of screen. So I hope everything could be recovered soon and we can meet everyone and have a cup of coffee in person. So before we get started with this presentation, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Feynman Zhou. I'm from KubeSphere team. I'm a senior community manager and Qing Cloud KubeSphere. And I'm also CNCF ambassador, CDF ambassador, and Fluent member. My skills include, but not limited to Kubernetes, Linux, Fluentbit, Fluentd, DevOps, and Serverless. And I'm really enjoying technical writing, advocacy and outreach, and host events. All right, in this talk, I will demonstrate how to build a cloud-native logging pipeline on the edge with Fluent Operator. So, in this presentation, I will walk you through the challenges of logging in Kubernetes, especially in the enterprise environment. And next, I will introduce two popular logging solutions. You might have ever used or heard about it, the Fluentbit and Fluentd. And next, I will introduce and demonstrate how Fluent Operator empowers Fluentbit and Fluentd. And then I will give a little bit deep dive into Fluent Operator and talk about its architecture and workflow. And finally, I will give a live demo and talk about its use case in KubeSphere. All right, when it comes to the challenges of logging in Kubernetes, we always receive some demands and complaints from different teams for security and compliance reasons. For example, our developers said that Hey, we have a huge amount of logs produced every day. They come from different data sources and data formats. Our administrators said that, hey, you have to make sure to troubleshoot your logs in a lightweight and secure solution. You also need to keep everything traceable. And our security teams requested that, hey, could you ship the logs and data to multiple destinations and outputs to audit and visualize them. Oh man, all of these things are in a chaos, right? So in the real enterprise environment, we actually have some logs come from different places such as biometric servers or, or virtual machines. They can also come from embedded devices, edge, container, port, TCP or UDP. And all of those data are in different data formats such as JSON logs, Apache logs, NGX logs, or container logs. And in some typical cases, you might want to ship them to different destinations such as Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, Loki, Splunk, MongoDB, or S3. Well, considering data security and reliability when processing logs in a multi-tenant environment, you have to isolate the log data and make it only visible to a specific user or in a specific namespace. Okay, how do you guys debug your Kubernetes workloads in your daily job? I think the native method such as kubectl commands is the most popular way for you to retrieve the logs from a specific container. Apart from that, if you are running your applications and infrastructure on the public cloud, for example, Azure on AWS, you might also adopt the logging solutions that are powered by the cloud providers such as Stackdriver, CloudWatch, and something like that. So you, you might also find that there are some SV solutions such as Splunk, Sumologic, Datalog, etc. So far, we also see a lot of popular open source solutions such as ELK, Loki, Fluentbit, and Fluentd. But in this talk, we will only focus on the open source logging solutions like Fluentbit and Fluentd. You know, handling data collection at scale is complex, 
and collecting and aggregating diverse data requires a specialized tool that can deal with the scenarios like different sources of information, different data formats, data reliability, security, flexible routing, and multiple destinations. That is why Flumbate comes in. When we take a look back at the history of Flumbate, you will find Flumbate, this project was started in 2015. Now it has been a sensitive sub-project under the umbrella of FluentB ecosystem. FluentB was written in C, which is a lightweight and zero dependencies project. FluentBeta is also pluggable. It has around 70 plugins available. Last but not least, FluentBeta is quite lightweight since it, it has low CPU and memory usage. Okay, FluentBeta also has monitoring and stream processing capabilities that are not listed in this slide. So far, Flumbit had reached 1 billion downloads and had been adopted by thousands of organizations such as AWS, DigitalOcean, Microsoft, CubeSphere, and so on. As you can see from this graph, this is a data pipeline that represents a flow of data that goes through the inputs, filters, and outputs. The input plugin, which is used to gather information from different data sources, part of which is used to convert from unstructured data to structured data. Filter is used to match, exclude, or enrich logs with some specific metadata. And output is used to define the destinations for the data. For example, remote sources, local file systems, Loki, Kafka, or something like that. Okay, FluentD is a data collector which lets you to unify the data collection and the conception for a better use and understanding of data. Okay, you will find that FluentD is much mature than FluentBate, which was started in 2011. And it has also been a CNCF graduate project. FluentD was written in C and Ruby. It is also pluggable and has around 1,000 plugins available. So to summarize, FluentD allows you to build your own unified logging layer. And this layer allows developers and data analysis to utilize many types of logs as they are generated. The most important thing is it mitigates the risk of bad data slowing down and misinforming your organization. Okay, at this point, let's take a look at the comparison of FluentBait and FluentD. This table describes a comparison in different areas of the project. So you could find that both FluentD and FluentBit can work as aggregators or forwarders. They both can complement each other or use them as a standalone solution. That is why Fluent Operator comes in and supports managing both FluentBit and FluentD. So FluentBit was born to facilitate the management of FluentBit and FluentD it allows you to manage the life cycle of FluentBait and FluentD. Before we deep dive into it, let's look back at its history of Fluent Operator. This project was open sourced as FluentBait Operator by CubeSphere team in January 2019. After eight versions iteration, it has been donated to the upstream Fluent community in August 2021. So, after it has integrated the FluentD into its operator, it has been renamed to Fluent Operator in March 2022. In April, Fluent Operator has reached the 1.0, which marks the maturity of this project. All right, this is the initial reason that we funded this project FluentBait Operator, as we have seen that the FluentBait cannot reload config gracefully and it does not support dynamic configuration. It requires users to restart its FluentBait pod and reload it manually. So it is not intelligent, especially in the production environment. That is why FluentBait operator comes in. Okay, let me give a general introduction to Fluent operator. As we mentioned earlier, the Fluent Operator, which is used to deploy and destroy FluentBait demo set or FluentD stateful set automatically. Second, 
it has custom configuration which allows you to select the plugins like input, filter, output, via labels. So as we mentioned earlier, the dynamic reloading is also the most important feature that has supported in the front operator. It has supported update configuration without rebooting front bit and front deep paths. Multi-tenant lock isolation has also been considered in front operator. You know, FluentD supports multi-tenant lock isolation through label router plugin. Last but not least, front operator provides pluggable deployed components. Either FluentBit or FluentD can be deployed separately. As you can see that although both FluentBit and FluentD are able to collect, process, and then forward logs to final de destinations, you know, although both FluentBit and FluentD are able to collect, process, and then forward log to different destinations. They have their own strengths in some different aspects. So Flumbit plays the role as a logging agent on each node since it is super lightweight and efficient. While Flumbit is more powerful to perform advanced processing logs capability because of its rich plugin system. As we mentioned before, Fluent operator was used to manage the Fluent bit at its inception. So if you only enable Fluent bit, then the workflow will be quite simple. As you can see from this diagram, the Fluent bit component defines the Fluent bit demo set and its configuration. Meanwhile, Fluent operator provides a customized Fluent bit Docker image. Fluentbit config selects the input, filter, and output plugins and generates the final configuration into a secret. So, how does Fluent Operator manage Fluentbit and its CRD to make it work better with Kubernetes? As you can see from this diagram, each CRD such as class input, class filter, and class output represents a Fluentbit configuration section which are selected by cluster FluentBit config via label selectors. Front operator watches those objects, constructs the final configuration, and finally creates a secret to store the configuration which will be mounted into the FluentBit demo set. So, the entire workflow is showing as this graph. So at this point, to enable FluentBit to pick up and use the latest configuration whenever the FluentBit configuration changes, a wrapper called FluentBit Watcher is added to restart the FluentBit process as soon as FluentBit configuration changes are detected. In this way, the FluentBit pod is not required to restart it to reload the new configuration. The FluentBit configuration is reloaded in this way because there is no reloading interface in FluentBit itself. So you can learn more details from these links as below. All right, as we introduced before, FluentD is much powerful to perform advanced data processing because of its rich plugins. So we added FluentD support in Fluent Operator and renamed it. Now you can receive logs through networks like HTTP or syslog and then process them and send those logs to the final destinations such as Elasticsearch, Kafka, and S3. Front operator provides three kinds of mode that you can use as you want. They are FluentBit only, FluentBit plus FluentD, and FluentD only. So Front operator includes CRDs and controllers for both FluentBit and FluentD, which allows you to configure your login pipeline in these three modes as you want. Fluentbit only mode, that means if you just need to collect logs and send those logs to the final destinations, all you need is just Fluentbit. So let's take a look at the Fluentbit only. As you can see from this graph, the Fluentbit CRD class Fluentbit config selects class level plugins and generates the final configuration into a secret. Then the other plugins like class input class filter, class output, and class parser are selected by class FluentBit config via label selectors. All right, let's take a look at an example use case of collecting Kubernetes application logs 
and send the logs output to Kafka. So you could define the plugins you want via the label and selectors. For example, it has defined the filter plugins like Kubernetes, Nest, and Modify plugin here. Next, let's take a look at the FluentDeep only mode. If you only need to receive logs through network like HTTP or syslog, and then process and send those logs to the final destinations, you just need to enable FluentD. Next, let's take a look at how those FluentD CRDs work. FluentD is used to define the FluentD stateful set and its configuration. A customized FluentD image is required to work with FluentD operator for dynamic configuration reloading. FluentD config, which is used to select class level or namespace level plugins such as input, filter, and output, and generates the final configuration into a secret. Similarly, the class FluentD config, which is used to select class level plugins and generates the final configuration into a secret. The other components such as filter and output are similar. They are used to define the namespace level and class level configuration respectively. Again, let's take a look at an example use case of using FluentD to receive logs from HTTP and send the output to stand out. You could define your plugins via labels and selectors, which is similar to the previous sample. Apart from the FluentBit or FluentD only mode, there's also a strong combination of FluentD and FluentBit in Fluent Operator. It has more flexibility since you could leverage their different strengths respectively. If you also need to perform some advanced data processing to the logs or route them to more destinations, then you just need to enable FluentD and choose the FluentBit plus FluentD mode. With its rich plugins, FluentD plays the role of a log aggregation layer and it is able to perform more advanced log processing, you can forward the logs from FluentBit to FluentD with ease using Fluent Operator. Next, let's take a look at a real case study from our team. You know, KubeSphere is an open source container platform built on Kubernetes. KubeSphere has a built-in logging console. It allows users to search the logs and configure the log collectors such as Kafka, FluentD, or Elasticsearch. KubeSphere adopts Elasticsearch serves as the backend logging service with FluentBit as a log collector. It runs FluentBit demo set on each node to collect the container logs and application logs. In this way, different tenants could search the logs in a unified logging console, and you are able to configure the logs only visible to the specific tenants or in a space. In order to help you guys get started with Fluent Operator, we have prepared a workshop with step-by-step -step labs. This workshop has involved a lot of typical and interesting use cases. For example, it starts from installing Flu Fluent Operator and helps you to deploy FluentBit and FluentD. Next, it involves three kinds of modes that you can leverage Fluent Operator to send logs to different destinations. For instance, we will use FluentBit only mode in this demo to collect Kubernetes application logs and send them to Kafka or Elasticsearch. Typically, you can also enable FluentBit plus FluentD mode. It has also some typical use cases in this section, especially in the multi-tenant scenario. Finally, you can also leverage FluentD only mode to use FluentD to receive logs from HTTP and output to stand out. Feel free to try it in your local machine or your edge devices. In this demo, we will collect Kubernetes logs and forward it to Elasticsearch by using Fluent Operator with FluentBit only mode. As we mentioned earlier, we have prepared a step-by-step -step workshop and walk you through how to deploy Fluent Operator and play around it. You can check out this lab from GitHub and try it yourself. All of the demos, sample code, and documentations are available at GitHub. All right, let's get started with this lab. 
I have already prepared a K3S cluster and a Minikube cluster before this lab. And in order to make this lab much efficient and convenient for you to set up in your local machine, I finally choose to use Minikube cluster for this demo. Any other Kubernetes distributions or native Kubernetes are also supported in this lab. You can clone the demo repository to your local machine and get all of those shared scripts. For the first step, we will deploy a Kafka cluster and an Elasticsearch cluster. So you can choose to forward those logs to Kafka or Elasticsearch as you want. After a couple of seconds, we could verify if all of those Kafka cluster resources are running. After all of those Kafka cluster resources are ready, we could go ahead and deploy Elasticsearch cluster with its Helm chart. It might take a couple of minutes to set up the Elasticsearch cluster, so we can take a look at the manifest of Fluent Operator and to see what has been defined in its YAML file. Since we choose to collect Kubernetes logs and forward to Elasticsearch using Fluent Operator with Fluent Bit only mode, so so we dig into this folder. As we can see from the architecture diagram of Fluent Operator, all of those Fluentbit CRDs such as Fluentbit, Class Fluentbit Config, Class Input, Class Filter, and Class Output have been defined in those YAML files. The destination such as Elasticsearch has been defined in the output CRD. If you want to define the other destinations such as Kafka or Loki or S3, you can define it here. Let's go back to the command line and to see if Elasticsearch is running or not. Alright, everything looks okay. The Elasticsearch cluster has been deployed successfully and now it should be ready to store the logs. Okay, at this point, we could find that the two destinations, Elasticsearch and Kafka, are ready to use. So for the next step, we are going to deploy the log forwarder and processor, you know, Fluentbit, to collect Kubernetes logs and ship them to these two destinations. So we could use Fluent Operator Deployment script to set up it and wait for seconds. After we see the Fluent Operator pod is running, that means we are ready to use Fluent Operator to deploy Fluentbit or Fluentd to process logs. Alright, let's enter the manifest folder and choose Fluentbit mode only. As we mentioned earlier, all of those CRD YAML files have been defined in this folder. So next, you can use kubectl apply to create all of those resources. Here we, can, here we can point the targeted folder to this place. Apply it, and then wait for seconds, you will find all of the CRD files. You will find all of those CRD resources have been created. So let's verify then. First, let's verify if the Fluentbit demo set has been set up and running. The Fluentbit demo set looks fine, so go ahead, let's check the CRD component of Fluentbit. As you can see from this Fluent Operator diagram, you might need to verify the status of those CRDs. Let's first check the status of Fluent Operator itself. And then we can get the status of cluster from base config. Next, go ahead, we can check the status of class input. Next, let's go ahead and check this class input status. Copy and paste it and change it to class filter. And we can see that the Kubernetes plugin has been defined in the class filter part. As we have defined the Elasticsearch as a destination in this login pipeline within the output plugin, so the result is looks like as the same as our expectation. All right, 
at this point, we could scroll down to the guideline of how to check the status and configuration of the Elasticsearch and to see if the logs and the index has been created in the Elasticsearch. At the same time, we could also find the Fluent-based pod is running due to we are using Fluent-based only mode here. So next, let's verify the Fluent-based configuration that is generated by the Fluent operator. So we can copy this command line and paste it in our terminal. Yeah, we could find the plugins that define in this Fluent-based configuration. It includes input, filter, and output. As we have already defined the Elasticsearch as a destination in the output, you can also change it to Kafka or other destinations as you want. Alright, at this point, we could check the logs from the Elasticsearch. So we can copy this command line and paste it in our terminal. Wait for a second. Yeah. After querying the Kubernetes namespace bucket in the Elasticsearch, we could retrieve the key value types of logs and data from the Elasticsearch. That means the logs have been collected and shipped to the final destination, you know, the Elasticsearch here. All right, at this point, we can also double check the result from the Elasticsearch index. Normally, it will create a new index for the logs that retrieved from Flumbit. Last but not least, as we have already deployed Kafka as an optional destination at the beginning of this demo, so you can change it to Kafka in the output CRD component.